Welcome to our another live broadcast on cyber security predictions in 2024, brought to you by Risk InfoSec. I'm Anisha, your host for today, and we are going to have an incredible session ahead. As we near the end of the year and approach the holiday season, let's redirect our focus to the lessons we can learn from cyber attacks and the future of cyber security in 2024. Understanding and learning from the recent incidents is crucial as we explore cyber security predictions. So today's live session, we will not only delve into the cyber security predictions, but also provide insights in building a roadmap to secure your digital life in the coming year and beyond. So now I'm honored to have a special chief guest with us today, Mr. Jairam, Chief Executive Consultant of Risk InfoSec, a CISP certified. He's highly skilled cyber security and GRC consultant with 14 years of experience. Apart from that, he also ad provides advisory services on information security and also advisory service to leading organizations in Oman and fortune under countries, uh, companies across the globe. Hi, Mr. Jeram. Hi, Anisha. Good evening. So thank you. Thank you for joining. So is there something you want to say? Yeah. So thanks for the wonderful audience who are tuned up for this particular live. And um, let's get started uh, without wasting a penny of second uh, on the cybersecurity predictions. But before we head into the predictions, we are also analyzing certain past attacks, especially common top attacks of this 2023. And also, I have an interesting uh, uh, like disclosure of a process. Okay, it's a unique uh, service which we offer in our risk process. At the end of the presentation, we're going to talk about that particular service, which is going to help you to take a massive leap to find any of your employees or contractors how they can take the data outside either deliberately or accidentally right so we can able to simulate that exercise in a smart way so i'll touch base on that at the end of the presentation so now let's get into the uh, presentation so cyber security right so it's all like you are just one step away from an attack one single vulnerability is, is all that an attacker needs windows center has uh, she has said that so so what is vulnerability? Vulnerability is a basically a weakness. Okay, so that is the entry point for any hackers to come in. In 2023, I have taken a, a list of vulnerabilities which has been exploited many times by different hacking groups. Okay, so in this, these vulnerabilities lead to exploiting a sensitive business application. Like you see, Sugar CRM. Sugar CRM is one of the critical, uh, like popularly used uh, CRM database which has a critical information for any organization. So all critical and sensitive layers, even move it, big supply chain companies or like any, or like when I worked with Fortune 100 companies, every company were having move it tra IT transfer. So almost these are like popular solutions and tools in that the vulnerabilities that has been exposed and exploited by the hackers. So what they have done by exploiting this vulnerabilities, so they could be able to compensate the, uh, like compromise the entire uh, network or the database, even they can lead uh, to a destruction by a ransomware attack. So there were two popular ransomware attack has leveraged these vulnerabilities. We're going to see about uh, those behaviors here. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah uh, one, one minute, Jaya. Like before we move on, uh, guys, please submit your questions and concerns in the comment section because we'll be addressing them along we go. So before you just, you have just stated all the exploited vulnerabilities, but how come you're telling that these are the most you know uh, found vulnerabilities like exploited one in 2023? Okay. So. We are speaking at the end of the year, so it's very easy to say, okay, this is the most exploited vulnerabilities. But when you go ahead and you want to have an active monitoring of vulnerabilities, okay, so you should have proper threat intelligence, or at least you should have manual capabilities to find what are the exploits in your application. Like, let's say you use uh, Outlook or you use uh, like SAP or like you use a firewall like Fortinet or whatsoever the product you have in your company. You have to do the profiling of all the product and you have to constantly monitor what sort of vulnerabilities is available in the uh, respective advisories okay every product vendors have their own advisories you have to have a keen watch on that and you have to immediately patch that once that has been disclosed i'll tell you why in the later slide because if you are thinking okay there was a patch okay a list today so let us try uh, let us do this patching on the next patching window one month later or like uh, like next quarter if you defer that you have a significant impact i'll touch base on that as well in the later slide Sure, sure, Jerem. Thank you. And this is about the logbit ransomware. Uh, okay, so as per the previous uh, slide, I said like 
there are, there are two ransomware has leveraged those vulnerabilities and exploited the organization in a very bad manner okay and lockbit is not something new but it is getting dangerous year on year especially in 2023 the way they have grown it is like something marvelous okay so the hackers have started a ransomware as a service okay so you would have heard about saas or like other uh, like pass or aas but ransomware as a service is happening around the globe yes that's you heard it right it's a service being provided by hacker and since this is being a ransomware as a service it is very difficult for even fbi or cisa or like uh, indian certain or it is tough to take down their services because they are spanning across the globe and even uh, like you can't imagine and channelize their network and they have uploaded many of their uh, like intellectual uh, the engines which will be helping to build the ransomware okay so that is also being offloaded so the community is very big and it is getting dangerous year on year so let's see the journey here so logbit started in 2020 uh, it was a uh, first seen in the russian language based on the cyber crime forum and later it has been evolved okay uh, there was version 2 logbit has been um, appeared so that was again uh, focusing on the linux systems and uh, several other um, uh, like technology where it has a limitation and they also started uh, releasing a exclusive variant of esxi you know everybody would have heard about vmware so everybody was thinking that okay vmware esxi will not have any kind of malware or cyber attack that was the assumption we had 10 years back because vmware is running on a bare metal os nobody can compromise that that's the understanding we have right but that was proven wrong entire esxi stack has been encrypted for multiple uh, companies across the globe uh, and we have seen live examples of such incident it was horrible because even if your backup is kept in the uh, under the uh, esxi one of the esxi server even that will be encrypted so you have to re- completely relook the strategy when if you even if you have esxi ensure all the patches and the hardening measures of esxi has been applied in your organization because even recent times we are facing some customer who is facing the esxi related cyber attacks and the ransomware and later logbit 3.0 has been emerged so that is again uh, like which is uh, scaling up to sorry which is scaling up to uh, meet the latest architectures of uh, serverless architecture or like even the cloud instances right so it is getting emerged as a logbit 3.0 and logbit green is exclusively a ransomware variant for the cloud infrastructure okay just look at look about the log, logbit green so they are coming towards hunting the cloud uh related um, like whatever aws azure so they are coming towards that to compromise ransomware uh, like to execute the ransomware attacks on the cloud variants and now uh, many people would have think uh, that mac will not have a ransomware attack that has been also uh, recently virus people has uh, declared that okay logbit also hackers are trying to inculcate in the uh, mac os and there are some evidence has been found in coming years yes you may feel or you may face Uh, the ransomware attack on the Mac as well, and uh, unfortunately, this, as I said, this is a ransomware as a service. It's a community-driven, uh, professional, uh, a crime uh, which is being happening across the globe. But on September 2022, the logbit, uh, like 3.0 builder, has been leaked. What is the builder? With that builder, I can generate multiple uh, ransomware uh, variants, and I can attack customer, uh, like attack the organization. So that is something little dangerous, right? Like So now that is with the non-logbit affiliates. When I say affiliates, who is not part of the ransomware as a service community, even beyond them, uh, there are many um, bad actors having this particular variant, which is quite dangerous. And this is one of the logbit was popular in 2023, and with along with that, equally, uh, which had done a greater disaster or like uh, data breaches in this particular year is Clock. even you would have heard about ui data breaches us federal agencies data breaches multiple hospital data data breaches all these things have been happened by the clock so what is clock ransom it was again originated from 2020 so all those variant uh, okay it, it, there is one uniqueness with clock okay so they are focusing on only on the file transfer application like move it share it or like uh, different uh, uh, file transfer media right so they are focusing on the file transfer applications because many uh, supply chain companies or like uh, like financial or healthcare everybody has to share some data with the regulators or some third parties or for the audit purpose or regulation purpose so that particular medium is targeted by this group for long years like 20 from 2020 they planned but in 2023 they had a massive compromise on all the uh, major companies in us including federal agencies 
So they targeted FTP in 2020. From there, they have successfully executed a pharma breach, which has uh, given lots of sensitive details about the uh, pharmaceutical company. And then eventually they moved to a Singapore-based maritime uh, service company. So there again, they could able to take bank details and different details of the um, customer, like the maritime services uh, organization. And then security researcher discovered Flop ransomware exploiting the solar wind vulnerability. You would have heard about solar wind, which was quite popular when that breach has happened. Uh, so that vulnerability is also started in 2021. From there, it was moved to Move It. Move It is one of the premium and top end uh, file transfer solution for many organizations. That was literally targeted by the hacker and they started the pattern. And through that extension in 2023, they could able to compromise various companies. So this is a zero day uh, vulnerabilities has been exploited. Uh, multiple vulnerabilities are leading to flop ransomware attack. It's not one vulnerability. Okay, so again, this ideation and the think tank in your incident response team or soft team, they have to find, okay, what are the ways flop can come in and what are the vulnerabilities have to be patched? That thinking process should be there on day to day basis because it's not a one time activity, it's a continuous evolvement. And okay, and few trends I want to show, okay, how we are heading towards the vulnerabilities. Is there any year uh, decrease? on the uh, like vulnerabilities no every year gradually it is increasing even if there is a shrink of by like, 1000 or 2000 it is going double or triple uh, in the coming years like here you see like 7000 to 6000 but it is increasing drastically the same way now it is like around 26000 uh, vulnerabilities has been reported in this year there is a chance it can even get doubled because there are many saas companies many vendors many products is coming as a uh, uh, many products is being released across different organizations across the globe so those but applications and uh, the uh, instances may have infinite vulnerabilities because of their libraries or different purpose. So you have to be watchful that next year it's going to even get uh, doubled. You will not wondering because now you have AI, AI based vulnerability detection is so fast. So we can expect to double the count of the vulnerabilities by next year. And okay, now I have given a uh, like scary number. Okay, 26,447. So what is the breakup of that? So vulnerability with the POC and exploitable. So what is that? If any vulnerabilities, okay, uh, is exploitable, there are forums, okay, in exploit DB or different forums for the uh, even for the gray hat hackers and the, for the black hat hackers, there are forums are there. So those forums will say, okay, what are the steps you have to execute to have a successful exploit? So likewise, if you see out of twenty six thousand, like twenty six percent of vulnerability is exploitable, and in that again what are the high risk vulnerabilities okay there are vulnerabilities which can be exploited at the minimum level which have a minor impact and also there are the vulnerabilities which can be exploiting and compromise the entire system or network or even the business operations so likewise if you segregate there are 206 vulnerabilities okay which is uh, having the exploiting of remote code execution and uh, like compromising the entire system so this 206 vulnerabilities are quite dangerous where uh, it has on the all the layers i'll i'll explain about that in a little later so these vulnerabilities will have on all the layers like os layer network layer infra layers everywhere so these are the pattern okay exploited by the name threat actors okay so there are some specific group okay CISA known exploits okay CISA is a community forum where they have a uh, known exploit uh, like uh, which is being disclosed in every month or every couple of weeks they push in that in their website which is exploited. When they say CISA exploited, then definitely it's going to be a serious threat because those exploits may be already in sale in the dark web of deep web. So these are the pattern like known exploit developers, not in CISA. Okay, so exploited by ransomware, exploited by malware, and name vulnerabilities, named vulnerabilities. Okay, so all these things are like independent body or independent threat actors may develop the exploits. Like let's say uh, even we also developing our own uh, threats uh, detection mechanism. So we uh, have to find how these hackers are behaving and we do our own exploit research. The same way hackers also will do exploit research to uh, compromise the entire system or disrupt the entire services. So that is a disaster. And then we have, this is a breakup of that uh, vulnerabilities which I have listed here, around 206, right? So those breakup is given like operating system vulnerabilities are like 57, network infrastructure. So all these things are potentially high risk vulnerabilities among 27,000. 25% of vulnerabilities has a significant impact. In that, if you go for again high vulnerabilities, like 206 vulnerabilities, is literally dangerous on all the layers. Like even if you have a Chrome browser, a vulnerable Chrome browser, the hacker can compromise your uh, 
system and they can execute the malicious code. So this is the uh, things happening around us. Okay, when we are doing the act, act as usual business, hackers are trying to attack every layer because I hear that some companies do uh, the black box testing or like external uh, VAPT on the perimeter or they think uh, only the perimeter is more sensitive. But all the layers hackers are targeting these days, you are not going to do testing only on one layer, which is on the either application layer or on the perimeter layer. You have to do API level mobile apps or like even um, level two segments, level three segments, you have to do a testing on that. And here if you see the trends of days, I, earlier when I was quoting that, uh, you have to patch any vulnerabilities on the same day. Why I was saying that is, this is a, again a uh, proven fact that in the recent times, okay, almost like 130 vulnerabilities has been exploited by hackers on the same day of release. Uh, actually, Jeram, uh, just a minute. Like, uh, are you like telling that when the vulnerabilities are disclosed on the same days, the attacks, uh, like the actors are attacking? Yes, you are right. When the vulnerabilities are just disclosed in the Twitter or in the official forum or exploit DB, the hackers are able to create their own exploits and compromise the the given vulnerabilities because there are certain vulnerabilities can be still alive without an exploit but if you see the trend here almost 120 vulnerabilities has been found with the proper exploit on the same day so what are the consequences you may face as an organization if you say i'm going to wait for three weeks or next patching window next quarter or year end uh, patching you are in a critical position where you're just one step away from the hackers uh, radar if they are targeting your organization your organization can be exploited at any moment so delaying any patching is going to have a severe impact. So I have even a, a trend on, uh, okay. So here we are talking about a trend on the exploit on high risk CV. So I said like almost hundred plus uh, vulnerabilities has been exploited this year when the, when they, when it is disclosed, especially high risk severity out of 60, 60 high risk, uh, this one on the day one, if it is disclosed, almost 15 has been exploited on the day one. So over the three weeks, if you see like 20 days, Almost all the high risk CVs has been exploited by the hackers. So if you wait for one month or three months patching window, you are missing something uh, like terribly you will end up in some attack or incident if you are keeping your patching window more than that. And this is the uh, age, vulnerability age versus the MTTR, mean time to resolve or remediate by patch. See here, there are companies who is uh, like releasing the patch in a different uh, period. So there are some places the vulnerabilities has been expo exploited. Like I said, the move it, right? The ransomware, club ransomware was leveraging that. So this was actually almost within 10 days, there was a severe, uh, like there was a patch release. Luckily, that is, has been patched. But if there is a uh, several sugar CRM vulnerabilities, the patching releasing time also will be delayed. But until the patch is not there, the hackers still keep trying and they try to exploit your CVEs and they try to compromise. Maybe it will be in the independent community here and there with the ransomware groups, they will, uh, ransomware or hacker group, they will uh, have their own, uh, like what is it, exploit within their network. It will not be publicly available exploit, but still it is dangerous. So any, uh, like one of these, if you have discovered, try to have that patching mechanism. If you don't have patching, or if you desire to not to patch, identify the compensating measures. What are the ways you can control the risk? That is something is important. So now uh, let's go to the, uh, we have seen enough about uh, what happened in the past. We have a bit less R&D wing in our organization where constantly we evolve uh, our security service and the uh, approaches to, the, to our customer. Part of that, we have predicted certain data, like data leakage by insider. That is one of the first thing we are facing that because many organization is having uh, like multiple uh, solutions like O3 Stify, your SharePoint or X, like different products you have in the cloud, uh, especially I'm talking about email. But also I'm talking about uh, the G Suite. Okay, you have G Suite, Google Drive, everything is available. But uh, like SharePoint, everything is available, right? So you give uh, access to any employees, like let's say there's an intern who is coming and joining. So they come, they grow over there over the long years. So they accumulate lots of privilege and it is leading to privilege creep. And even sometimes what happens is when you give lots of admin access to the people or like when there is a authority to create their own share folders or like the data, like share points or whatsoever channels. So what you are giving exposure is you are not controlling the data footprints. 
within your organization. So this data is being leaked by the insiders just with their basic access. They are not using some rocket science. They are not using script. They are not using anything, something yeah, third party tool. They use just legitimate browser and legitimate credentials of their uh, this one. So we are seeing an increase in cases uh, based on our observation in the industry. So next year you can expect lots of data breaches by insider, but you will not have a clue how that is being happened if you don't have a proper mechanism to find it. And second thing is ransomware attack, attacks on the cloud. This is the second prediction we have. Everybody has seen ransomware attack in your data center, but now the game is getting shipped with, with the clock green. So they are going to target exclusively the cloud environment. So ensure that your cloud is hardened as per the practices, best practices. You may say I am in AWS, I am in Azure, but that is not going to be self percentage uh, security. They are going to take care of only the volumetric attack. So what is the volumetric attack? The bulk attack, a yeah, DOS distributed digital of service, or yeah, like suddenly uh, DOS or buffer overflow attack, they're going to protect you. But they are not going to protect you against a specific attack which is targeted against your company and targeted uh, like uh, against your applications. So they are not going to uh, find that. So for example, if port 443 is allowed, they're going to specially craft some message and they're going to embed some payload within that and they're going to attack you. This is something will not be blocked by AWS or Azure until you have specific hardening and security layer. Like difference in that and uh, cyber attack leveraging uh, okay so disgruntled employees so when you have disgruntled employees people, the hackers try to leverage them and they try to uh, get information through their uh, like friendship or like com community ways they are trying to get more uh, information through the forums also different forums so any disgruntled employees is there you should have uh, like user or employee behavior analytics solutions in your company to find any disgruntled employees or like people so that will help you to harm you if something is wrong <coughs> and crypto jacking is something is uh, about the crypto mining so the hackers are sending a malicious file to you uh, as of today like maybe an email or something but once you click that it may be a legitimate file there is no malware as such but they will have a payload to execute mining process in your mobile phones or in your uh, laptops you would have suddenly found your laptop is running with the faster uh, like fan speed or your mobile is getting overheated so all those things is like a sign of uh, crypto jacking and the bug plantation is something uh, which is another rise in the market where people are uh, like i i have got a, a, a like one usb cable as free when we tested that it is like it is an omg cable so omg cable is nothing but it looks like similar to your charging cable but if you go and connect that in the charger a hacker can wirelessly control your mobile yes true wirelessly they can control your mobile literally and they can even take the data outside or like they can format whatsoever they want to do they can do it so bug plantation is going to increase and um, we are working with government agencies to ensure the device security clearances are being done in all the layers before they utilize in their business so private companies maybe it's heavier for you but consider some sort of security clearance before you utilize any endpoints or devices or even USBs charger. Don't think that just a charger cable. Okay, it has a massive impact. And finally, the failure of incident detection is the key thing, which uh, leads to a like like many companies think that okay, I have a, a like SOC team, we are uh, capable to find any attack, but still they are failing to detect certain incident because of inadequate log sources. Uh, Jairam, uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. So, uh, how can an organization, you know, determine that they have an adequate, you know, logs coverage for incident detection and all? Okay. So, see, first thing is you have to determine all the layers of data of your organization. So, let's say you are having um, like app servers, DB, your perimeter firewall, and you have end user who is accessing the application, right? You have to ensure that all the layers, okay, has been. Uh, feed it with the seam solution or some advanced uh, technologies where it is analyzing the logs and patterns and behaviors of the different endpoints, different layers equipment. So many companies, what they do is they put the perimeter firewall inside and they put something on the uh, like uh, like Active Directory inside the seam, but they fail to connect all the layers. Like L2 logs is important in the incident investigation. They are trying to eliminate that because okay, they think okay, it's L2 logs. In perimeter whatever goes outside of my organization i'm worried only about that okay many people think that uh, maybe for just a regulatory checklist they are am i audible anisha 
Is that am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yes, you are audible. Yeah, yeah. So many companies think that okay, just for the regulatory purpose or some particular uh, uh, like for the audit sake, they go with the same with the limited scope. That is not going to help them anymore. That's the reason I said failure of incident detection is going to be a common thing because co when companies are cost conscious, they fail to have the proper scoping in the seam or in the soft environment. So you are tend to miss certain vulnerabilities or like threats or even the live uh, command and control actions, you'll miss it. Lateral movement attacks, you'll miss it when you don't have L2 systems or L3 systems. So that's something you have to revisit as part of the predictions which we are seeing. So as I said earlier, okay, so the lateral movement assessment, right? I was saying uh, I'll disclose a service which is more uh, want, most wanted in the 2024. So in 2024, uh, we would say that you are lateral movement exposure in terms of the privilege creeps. Like what, like let's say I join as a receptionist in your company. What is the maximum damage that receptionist can make to your organization? So simulating that is very key for your uh, security posture. And what are the ways the remote code execution or like ransomware attack can happen? What are the windows? What are the paths? So that discovery, you have to think about it. And then network segmentation assessment where you have to find whether your network security, whatever you have prescribed, is it meeting the standard? Is it up to the mark? That has to be assessed. And finally, uh, like different data leakages. What are the ways the data can be leaked outside of your organization? Many people say that, okay, we have a DLP, but besides the DLP, we have shown many companies the data can be leaked outside the organization within one day or like within few hours also we have demonstrated. So to know more about this, you can reach out to our team, okay? We can have a awareness session. We can explain what is the nuances you have to focus, and you can empower your internal team with this capabilities. Okay, so that's it. Sure. Thank you, Anisha. Yeah, thank you, Jaram. Actually, the your thanks for the such valuable insights and the information as you provided was very incredible and enlightening, even for now for the damages and for the uh, future predictions too. And now. Uh, is there something else you want to add or we can go to the comment section in general? Yeah, find out, find out if there's any comment. Yeah, we can pick it yeah. up. Yeah, just a minute. No, as for now, we have not got any comments uh, okay. right now. Fine. So feel free to reach out to us uh, in case you have any queries. We will address on the comment section. Okay? Yeah, sure. So, um, Jaram, is there something else you want to add? We'll just move on to the end because anyways, uh, it's 30 minutes of no session, live session. Yeah, yeah. So I'm fine. Okay, so here, uh, one thing is, this is a takeaway, key takeaway. Look beyond whatever you are doing traditionally. Don't get easily convinced with one number. Uh, like, let's say you have number one product in EDR, number one firewall. Don't get convinced that, okay, we are having the highest security. The security has to be addressed in different layers. Ensure you are focusing on beyond number one products in one or two segments. You should have number one products on at least five layers of the OSI. Only then you can be sustaining different attacks. Yeah, that's true. Uh, thank you, Jerem. Thank you once again. So uh, guys, I think like uh, you have found our insights and tips valuable. And uh, we wish you a very yeah. successful and a secure okay. holiday season. I, I, we have received a comment, okay. This yeah, one, yeah, yeah, just one. Okay, Maha Pushpa Gopalakrishna. Yeah. I one, will cloud security be great demand in the future? Yes. Yeah. Yes, cloud security is going to be on demand, okay, but what is the depth you're going to go, go into the cloud security? You should not be kind of guy who is just monitoring the cloud. You should have the fundamental foundation of cloud, okay, and also have the security posture related aspect, okay. I, I would not say that only having cloud security is going to take you to the greater heights. You should have the fundamentals, how the uh, threats, vulnerabilities is operating, and on top of it, yes, it's going to be a good profession. You have you can target CCSP, that is the ISC2 certification, which is focusing on cloud security. Go into that, but just explore many uh, uh, like different risk management, GRC. So all those knowledge is required for the cloud security. Cloud security is not a, just a technical work where you change some configuration. Okay, you have to strengthen your, your governance skill. Okay, Go when I say governance, how the policy of, and procedures of cloud security has to be there, and then you have to focus on the technical capabilities of how to implement the uh, expectation of the management. Okay, and finally you should have the recurring process how it can be effect efficiently. Um, utilize on day to day. Okay, so all these three areas you have to address as a cloud security engineer. It's not just fancy that you are going to um, sit and configure some configuration. But yeah, maybe you would start as a L1 in that particular role. But this is the area you have to have as a visionary leader, and you can grow 
much much higher in the cloud security industry okay. thank you thank you yeah. uh, no i don't think so it's only one question okay perfect so any other questions will be having in the comment section address okay so you can address in the private uh, in the uh, yeah i'll chat yeah yeah okay sure you can enter so yeah. thank you thank, thank you, you thank you so much thank you all yeah jerem sure sure Thank you, thank you, Jerem. Thank you all. Have a safe, unsecure uh, holiday season, and stay out until next time. Thank you, thank you all. Bye bye.